Hello Brentwood High School, I'm Reed Smith. And I'm Rachel Alt. Here's what's making news. High schoolers often complain about classes starting early, but now it seems as if administrators are finally doing something about it. Morgan Yoder has more with the story. Williamson County Schools are considering later times for high school and earlier times for elementary students. Assistant Principal Mr. Hames talks about his opinion on the schedule change. You know, personally, I just believe there's 24 hours in a day. Um, and, uh, you know, what's going to end up, you know, people are worried about, well, what about part-time jobs? What about practices? What about homework? Um, I think, you know, we're all, we're just going to have to adjust. So if they do get moved, I don't know that sleep is going to improve. I think what will happen, so that hour we lose after school for practice or job or homework will now become the hour before school that we need to get it done. So I don't know that, that teenage sleep patterns will change as a result of any start time that we do. Um, you know, I, I think it is a valid concern. Teenagers don't sleep enough, and I, I'm not sure school start times is the... Um, reason that adolescents don't get as much sleep as they need to. I think, you know, if we make it seven, eight, or nine, the amount of sleep may not actually change that much. Students have different views on the possible time change. Senior Madison Young tells us why she is against the switch. Okay, I don't think that high school should start later than elementary school because high schoolers have a lot more extracurricular activities than the elementary school kids do, so we need a lot more time to do those activities and get our homework done. So if we started later, we would not have as much time to do our sports and our clubs, and we wouldn't be able to have time to do homework, so it's just better to have more time than if we started later. Freshman Bentley Birchall talks about why a later start could be beneficial. I think everyone will be like a lot less tired, so it'll be easier. Everybody will get like better grades. And they won't be as tired all the time. Morgan Yoder, WBHS 9 News. Two Brentwood cheerleaders have been chosen to be on the All-State Cheer Squad. Seniors Mary-Kate Randolph and Laura Province were nominated by Coach Mandy Bysack and tried out for the squad in Manchester, Tennessee on August 27th. Of the 30 that tried out, Province and Randolph were chosen to be on the 18-person squad. They will be cheering at the East Tennessee-West Tennessee, Tennessee All-State football game in December. After the break, Reed brings us more on sports. You're watching WBHS 9 News. The Brentwood football team took a shocking loss to Rossview last week, but looks to bounce back against the 2-1 Franklin Rebels. Meanwhile, the volleyball team continues to roll through the district while anticipating the return of sophomore hitter Logan Eggleston. Registration for the PSAT is now online. The test, which is available for freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, will be held on October 19, 2016, and the deadline to register is September 28. The cost is $18 payable by check to the counseling department. Apps are becoming more and more important, and Brentwood High School students are learning what it takes to make them. Stephanie Steele has more. Technology is becoming more prominent in everyday life, and that's just what Coach Sanford's students are preparing for. BHS software development students are not only learning basic programming, but are also learning how to apply that knowledge to create apps for the school. We've been working with Ms. Filer to develop a website to help streamline that process. So teachers will be able to log on to that website, uh, call students to enrichment, and it'll give feedback to the teachers, um, hopefully streamline the process of actually calling students in the classroom, because right now fourth period teachers get a list of students and it's their job to um, tell the students, hey, you need to go see this teacher for this reason. Uh, so hopefully we're looking to streamline that process a little bit and make it a little easier to use. Sanford believes that becoming computer literate now will create better opportunities for students in the future, causing students to become more successful in their careers. 
Learning computer science and learning programming is huge, uh, I think for the most part because it helps teach people how to be problem solvers and teach them how to use technology and utilize it, not necessarily at um, as a programmer, as a software developer, but in whatever field that they choose to go into in the future. Uh, I think that our world as a whole is becoming more and more focused on technology and that the job market is going to be more and more focused in that area. Um, so if our students are more computer literate now, um, then I think they're going to be more successful in the future. And I think that m the more people who take computer science courses, whether it's programming, um, uh, Java or software design, it's just going to help that, uh, fill that need in the future. Stephanie Steele, WBHS 9 News. Thank you for joining us. I'm Reed Smith. And I'm Rachel Alt. See you next time on WBHS 9 News.